Hello and welcome to another episode of the TNC podcast. The guests have been coming one by one and we have got another whopper for you today. I am so excited to have this conversation again. I've been working on this for a, for a number of years and finally I've got him with me. Not afraid to say my absolute Norwich City idol growing up as a kid supporting the football club. Uh, you're just saying that, but thank you. No, 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 no. The best, the best <laughs> debut in Norwich City history. Tore apart Manchester United, the Ipswich Town destroyer, the man, the myth, Mackenzie, whoa, Mackenzie, whoa! How are you? That, is one, that is one song I do miss. I, I, I definitely admit that. that is one song I do miss. How are you, my friend? I'm very good. Thank you for asking. Good. Thanks for inviting me on. How's life treating you? Very well, thank you. Um, it's been a a very transitional period in terms of of life uh, after football very sort of up and down and you know trying to find my way sort of thing but you know life is good at the moment there's a lot of things that I'm doing that are very positive I'm very grateful for the position that I have I'm very grateful for what I achieved not just in football but obviously in boxing after and uh, I'd say now ultimately uh, everything I do around mental health which is really a massive platform in terms of life and people what, what people suffer from so yeah i mean i'm I'm doing okay um you know doing the daddy thing and trying to be better every day before you came on leon you said i thought i've been forgotten by norwich fans and so i mm -hmm. want to make sure by the end of this you know that you've not been forgotten about we've got so much to cover in this episode but i think the best thing that we could start off with, Leon, is let's rewind and let's go back to the beginning of your time um, at, at the football club. Perhaps your first few days, obviously, signing from, from Peterborough. I think it was Nigel Worthington that, that brought you into the football club. What, mm. was that, what was that period like for you in, in, in your life? It was exciting for me. Um, Norwich has is, is always been a club that I've, I've respected. And I remember when I was at Crystal Palace as a kid, uh, I scored against Norwich at Sellers Park. I think it was only, I was only 17. Um, but I always knew of the pedigree. I always knew of the pedigree. Um, and when this, you know, came about, and I knew, I knew that I was waiting for that opportunity, I knew that I wanted to get back to where I felt I belonged uh, within those levels. Um, so when Norwich sort of came in at the time, and it was, because I think it was, you know, probably the previous season or a couple of seasons before, there was talks of me sort of going to a bigger club. Um, but as you know, I've never been very fortunate around injuries. Um, and I had a major injury uh, dislocating and breaking my left ankle. So that, you know, really postponed the, the, the process of moving. And when it finally came around, I was just, I was just excited. Um, obviously went down there. It was such a like family orientated club, probably more so back then. And, uh, you know, I, I just I just warmed to it. And I think the difference with 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 myself and, and and just knowing myself is is when you feel like wanted, you know, you'll you'll see that I'll give my everything um, regardless. When I feel like I'm appreciated and I felt like I was I was wanted um, and all, you know, it wasn't like I, I played exceptionally well every single game, but I can. With my hand on my heart, I, I would definitely say that, you know, any of my teammates, any fan watching, you'll know, you know, I'm on the pitch. You know, I'm giving my all, and and that's what. However, I left. However, I left the sport was was the only way I wanted to really be remembered. Um, yes, I can score a goal and I can be very influential and make massive impacts in in big games. I knew I had that in me. But an overall player, an overall character, it, it, for me, it was all about the character and energy that it, it is sort of put out there. And um, I really believe that I tried to do that. So when I did get my opportunity to sign for Norwich, you know, to be amongst some fantastic players uh, and obviously with the levels, I remember my first day training and I'd done really well. I was really feeling good. Uh, I didn't expect to start. Um, and then obviously Matt, Matthias Fenson came in as well. Yes. And then we, you know, sort of Nigel, after after that training session, he pulled me and said, I want to start you. 
uh, uh, along with with, with 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 fencing. So I was like, really, you're gonna start me? And I was like, all right then, let's go, sort of thing. I, I was ready. Um, did I know how big the game was? I didn't know how big the game was, the magnitude of the game. I'd had no idea. And to, I think the way I just approached the game away, you know, at Portman Road to be in a position where, okay, this is me arriving, but at the same time to arrive in, in such fashion, I'll never forget. And um, I hope some some Norwich fans, you know, don't forget that actual moment to, to, to take us top of the league as well. Um, I think was a massive achievement in itself. Being that I was, you know, I was coming into a side very blind, very, it takes time to, to, to settle in. And um, being that I settled in so quickly, I was truly, truly grateful and um as you as you know the two goals were were, were great in in itself um i know paul mcveigh had a massive influence in the in the first goal and uh gary holt had a massive influence in the second but i think when i when i always look back at the header it was a superb header you know <laughs> <laughs> it was and like i it was a superb head. It was a superb header from that sort of distance and angle. Um, but one of the things that I was very under, underestimated in uh, within football, even though you know, I got to sort of Premiership level, was my aerial strength. Yes, like, I was so good in the air, and um, yeah, that really helped my game a lot. Leon, let's talk. Let's like zoom in further on that day and perhaps reflect on your your thoughts and feelings. You, you've stolen the question out, out of my mouth. I'm it, sorry. I, I that, that, that debut, mate. It, it was just, it was phenomenal. And as you say, you know, to send us top there. I remember being in the stands, top of the league, the Portman Road, and you were just the man, like the man, like the Norwich City rock star. And I hadn't seen that throughout my whole supporting time at Norwich City until that point. And mm. what I want to ask you is perhaps, obviously you go, you go school one, it's your debut. You can't even believe you're starting as you've, as you've divulged there. But then afterwards, like just describe the feeling. I've got a great picture here of you and, and Flem and you just must have felt untouchable, Leon. Um, not so much untouchable. I was just, I was more overwhelmed. I was more, really? yeah, I was more overwhelmed from it actually happening. I mean, you know, to come to to a new club, a bigger club and, and lay it down like that. I was probably not sort of surprised myself, but I didn't think I'd get two goals in fashion the way I did it sort of thing. And if they weren't, like, you know, they had the Darren Bents and everyone that sort of come with it in the Ipswich side. So, you know, it was, it was, it was quite surreal for me. Um, I think what I did find quite difficult was obviously that sort of happened. And then, you know, everyone's like, wow, like this is, this is it. This is the levels. Do you know what I mean? And, I think we played Nottingham Forest. I was on the bench, for, I think, for the next game, maybe, or I started, I can't remember. I think it was Forest the next game. I didn't really have the same effect, probably for a few games thereafter, to mm. time to maybe sort of find myself again. Um, so that played in my mind a little bit. Um, but either way, I was going to show you what I'm about. So sometimes, and I think a lot of players what they struggle with nowadays for the new gen of players is, you know what, sometimes it's not always going to go your way, but you have to have the ability to show what your character is about and and and, and sometimes have that fight in you to to want to win, no matter how bad it is, you have to try. And and I think that's, that's you know, that's something that may be sometimes missing. Whether it's how much players are given nowadays, I, I, I don't know, but... There's a massive, you know, there's a thin line between, you know, going sort of through the motions and, you know, okay, we've not won today or whatever, but actually understanding as a team. I think within that team, there was a certain bond in there um, yes. where we kind of knew each other's strengths. We kind of knew who was good at this, who was good at that and so forth. And, and I think that really helped. And I think within a team, it wasn't all about individuals, even though, 
the likes of you know certain special players like Darren Huckabee and and Dean Ashton uh, obviously came in and, and made such a massive impact and totally complemented my game. I, I couldn't have done it without my team members. Leon, we will talk about your team in, in just a short moment in, in some depth and detail. And I've got a couple of surprises for you, actually. And But before we do that, on this podcast, Leon, just the, the, the guests that we've had over the years and the, the different eras that, we, that we've spoken to, we hear a lot about Paul Lambert. We hear a lot about Chris Hewton. But we don't really hear much about Nigel Worthington. And I want to ask you about him especially because... Obviously, your 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 first season, 03-04, we obviously absolutely smash it. We win the league. I'm assuming that you've got this amazing relationship. And then obviously at the end, it changed, which we'll get on to later on in the podcast. But what was Nigel Worthington like as a man to, to, to work under at Norwich City? He had like a bit of a school teacher vibe. Did so, he? Yeah. So where, where I'm from, I'm from South London. So sometimes... Rough. If you're like from where he's from, and then you've got a kid that's from where I'm from, right? The culture clash can be a little bit interesting sometimes. So I'm, you know, sometimes I can come across quite like, you know, that kind of South London sort of vibe about me. It's not because I'm ignorant, rude, or or, or impassionate. It's just sometimes when you're from South London, you, 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 you see different kind of cultures, right? Oh. Um, and I found with him... He, yeah, he was just kind of like school teacher he fired, but still had something about him that brought something out okay. of all of us. So me and him had a bit of a love kind of hate relationship, but when he used to go into his little moments of shouting, which I found quite funny at times, but he used to be like, you know, lose his sort of marbles, shall I say. Um, I used to kind of be like, okay, then I'll show you sort of thing. So it was kind of that sort of thing. Quite like when, I, when I did used to kind of either be someone in training or or smash someone or do something very like where it's reacting to it, he'd be like smiling on the side like. <laughs> so it was that kind of relationship. But it um, worked. It worked. Absolutely. And, and it very evidently did. And uh, obviously we, we, we have a great season that season. We, we then go to the Premier League and we're there in 2004 or 05. And as you say, we're, we've got some great players at, at that point. And I want to zoom in on, on your goals, Leon, right? Because you scored against the biggest clubs in the country. And um, I guess I should start up by asking you, what, what was your favourite goal in the Premier League? Was it the obvious? Was it Manchester United at home? I'd have to say so. Uh, being right. being everything, the circumstances, I, I'm a... I'm a I'm a kid from Fulton Heath, South London, and, and it was always a dream. I had played premiership football at 18 years old for Crystal Palace, which yes. no one would really know. Um, didn't start a game, but I was coming on 10, 15 minutes here in the Premier League back then. And that was a totally different kind of Premier League with like your Tony Adams and Martin Keown breathing down your, mat, down your neck and you're like 17 years old, skinny little... You know, it was just like a bit like daunting. So I wasn't ready at, at that precise moment in time. But to go into the premiership, um, to just be in a, in a position of, wow, like, is this actually happened? There was a moment in that Manchester United game, probably in the first 15 minutes of the game, mm. first 15 minutes, first 15, 20 minutes of the game, and obviously Rio was marking me and, you know, a few others. I was looking around and I was thinking, am I really here? <laughs> like, I had a little moment, yeah? Leon, Leon, Rude Van Nisseroy was in that team. Yeah, yeah. Rude was in that team. Skulls was in that team. Oh, obviously, yeah, Rio, yeah, Mar yeah, yeah. Ronaldo, Ronaldo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw it all. Um, so I had a brief moment, probably of about five seconds, where I was just like, oh my God, like, am I actually doing this? And then I switched back into it. Um, and I just grew, I, I don't know, I just grew with com confidence. Um, it was a very good game. I thought Rio was excellent. Just I thought he was very good. Um, but I was just happy to, yeah, I was just happy to get a goal that was, I think it will obviously always be in the history books, but it, it did change my life. Um it did change my life. And and to be honest, like, and, and no one really knows 
what sometimes we go through behind closed doors, you know. Um, but that goal, it meant so much. But at the same time, it was just like, wow, if you, if you guys only knew, you know. Leon, I, I want to ask you about that because I recently saw one of your Instagram videos talking about that because, of course, you score against Manchester United, as you say, iconic, legendary, in the history books forever, that goal, my friend. You take off your shirt and it's like the it's like an iconic image of you giving it the muscles to the to the river end. But actually, you were in a really, really challenging place mentally at that time. Would you mind sharing a bit about that with, with the North <laughs> fans? Uh, yeah, no problem at all. It's, it's it's really understanding what my mind was doing. So, you know, football wasn't really preparing me, you know, to to, to be going through divorce and missing my children and mm. all the things that sometimes we take for granted. Um, I really realised what depression was around the best time of my life in playing football. So, um to get a great understanding of that, I did, I, you know, I didn't have enough education around it to, you know, back then it wasn't really talked about. Mental health wasn't really talked about in the fashion it is today. So I had to keep a lot in. And but by doing that, it was more self-sabotaging and more self-destruction. None of my teammates, my teammates would tell you like, Liam, like, you know, I'd come into the training ground, very bubbly, very confident, very, it's all for show. It's all bravado. It's all, like it's all an act um so when you know when as as you know as things go on later on in my career and it falls deeper into you know really really sort of low places in life um you really realize that you know what depression's real depression was real and why that why that goal was so iconic for me is because yes you know the, the man you see uh you know celebrating and given given get you know that i'm the man sort of process and yeah I, in that the, there was moments of that but at the same time if i was to ask you what you you could see at that moment you would say oh yeah you know arrogant you know he's the man the world's on his you know the world he's got the world in his shop like whatever mm -hmm. but if i was to ask you the same sort of question in a different context and say to you well actually that man was suffering from depression, mm. you'd never know, right? So yeah. I'll put it down to the Pinocchio's nose. You know, there's no there's no um, Pinocchio's nose for mental health because, you know, unless you can visually see uh, the depression, you can visually see me sort of suffering, which you couldn't, um, you know, the, 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 there's just no way of, of, of telling. Uh, and that's why it's so iconic. But... You, you build off of that. Um, yeah, and things obviously did get worse later on in my career. Started to kind of, you know, went to Coventry and, yeah, that was, that was all a bit of a a mess in itself. I didn't really want to leave Norwich, to be honest. Didn't want to really leave. Um, but it was time. It was time to, to really look after myself in terms of where my mind was at um, and really try again and start a new chapter um and 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 just understand that okay this is it so it was never really uh to do with me wanting to to leave as such but i think sometimes you know what it's like all that rumors and that can can come into play and then sometimes it gets fair and there, there was rumors that i was in a mental home and all these things that you know these, these guys that that come on behind the computers and and want to like you know, start up a little forum and blah, blah, blah. Well, here's the thing. I never was in a mental home, um, but I'm not ashamed to say that I was suffering in my own kind of way, um, mostly because of the injury, you know, the injury process I was sort of going through as well. Yes. And I didn't really know how to cope with that. So it was that, that was sort of one trigger. But when I, you know, look deep into things, you know, my my sort of story really goes back to childhood trauma to, you know, really developing as an adult. But understanding that, you know what, there was a there was a lot wrong with the fundamentals around sport, football. Mm, yes. There, there was a lot wrong in, in terms of no one really understood the whole mental health side of it. Yes. Right. So 
you know, it was me just trying to be as best, you know, I'm, you know, just trying to keep it 100 and, 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 and as I've, as I've gone on to, you know, different things in, in life. And um, you, you'd all know, cause it was all in the papers in knowledge that I had to go, you know, into Woodhill prison, ACAP prison uh, for, for driving stuff. Um, all that process is not because I'm a bad person. It's because sometimes you get a little bit lost in, 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 in you know, transitionings and, I didn't really transition well towards the back end of my football career, uh, and what that led that that leads you into maybe maybe becoming a little bit more self destructive, mm-hmm. maybe a little bit more really shouldn't you know not not really caring in you know being a little bit naive, being very kind of just not really looking into things deeply, um, and 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 being careless, uh, you know, and and that that was you know to to. To, to have that sort of put on me in the way it was, fine, no problem. But we dealt with it. It wasn't a feel, so, you know, we dealt with it. We went in there. I was productive. Uh, I wrote an autobiography, as you know. Uh, it was all about coming out and being as productive as I, as I could. The autobiography came, and I went through another uh, life-changing situation, which was horrendous. Um, and yeah, it is like, I don't tell my story to, for people to feel sorry for me. Oh, you know, shut up. You play premiership football and you know what you got to feel sad about or what you got to feel bad about and all the, uh, you know, whatever. But I can tell you this for free, you know, with all the speaking I do, with all the, 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 the talking that is very much directed into a topic that does end lives. Uh, you know, I'm very lucky to be speaking with you today, Chris. So as much as everyone wants to be a little bit, mm. oh, you know, shut up, oh, we've heard it all before, we don't feel sorry for you and blah, blah, That's not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't talk for people to feel sorry for, for me. Mm. I speak because I know that, that there's someone out there might be suffering how I was maybe suffering behind closed doors, whether that's athletes or normal society people. And, something I may say might give them a little bit of hope and understanding to to really say, yeah, I'm going to fight this. I'm going to fight it. And that is my main message in, in you know, to anyone. Behind you, mate. It's behind you, mate. But it's, on your, it's on your top as well. It's, 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 my, it's my brand. It's what I believe in. These five words save, save my life. Um, mm. But it's all about reinvention. So, yeah. You know, I had a suicide attempt. Yeah, I went to prison. Yeah, I had a fantastic football career. You know, when that's all over, you know, you have to look at yourself and you have to look at yourself in the mirror. And I've done that a few times. And then I reinvented myself and went into a professional boxing ring at the age of 35 years old, right? No amateur. Yes, I've got boxing family and my DNA is within, you know, what it is. And that's the blueprint. But... To actually go and do it yourself um, at 35 years old and win an international title and fight for English and Southern Area titles, retiring at the age of 39, where you're fighting guys who have been in this all their life, who've had best part of 42 fights to your 10. I can honestly say that I gave my all. Um, and that transition was a period where I can say, you know what? Yeah, I've done all right. May I, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm getting a bit emotional, to be honest with you. I, th- I think um, I think it's so inspirational what you're doing and what you have done, what you continue to do. Um, one of our charity partners above your head, actually, um, Norfolk and Waverley Mind, who are a mental health charity nationally, but obviously lo- locally as well. And, you know, and I just implore people to, you know, hear Leon out and listen to him be vulnerable and, you know, to talk in the way that you do about it. And, and I love what you've said there about, you know, you do it to help others, right? And, you know, it's not too dissimilar to me with, you know, losing my mum and, you know, talking about that um, is so powerful. And I love what you've said there as well about reinventing yourself, right? And I guess, I guess Leon, to put an action in this, and um, we, could, we could have a whole podcast on mental health, but the one thing I want to ask you about mental health is, uh, everyone says, oh, you know, 
just talk like that that was the phase that we were in you know i think we're probably maybe still in we're still we're still in that zone but my question to you is when you had if you don't mind me asking very sensitive when you had attempted suicide mm. how did you get back up off the canvas again and what would you say to people watching this and listening to this now that find themselves in a place of seemingly no hope how can they get up that spiral again i think sometimes you have to lose everything to understand what your character is going to do um i felt like i lost my identity so by losing my identity you you don't know what's next and when your mind can break down as it as it can in, in for anyone for any human being mm. uh we've all got triggers so when it can break down like that you you've got to um really find it within yourself to what you're living for so now i've got five beautiful kids so they're my power right um anyone that knows me properly knows that they are my power so I had that. I've also got a loving family, you know, you know my mum, dad, sisters, and and everyone that adores me, and and you know, some fantastic close friends. So my position and my me speaking to myself after I got through this period and looked forward, because all I've ever done from that suicide attempt is is try. Yes, I have my bad days still. I have I have bad days and sometimes I'm like, oh, this is, you know, not good today. Mm -hmm. But to not feel like I, you know, I ever want to check out a life again is 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 always a, you know, quite meaningful to me. And you have to look at your value. You have to you have to begin to do the work on yourself and love yourself, right? So, um, but also my power is knowing that you know what i can't ever do that again mm. because i don't want to I, I i can't imagine what it would be doing to my children now who are growing up without me right a hundred percent so that's my fight that's my fight I, I, i'm not gonna you know i'm gonna show what i show my children now is that yes daddy once upon a time was in this place or should I say dad for my 19 year old and 26? They don't like saying that. But dad was in a place, in a very low place. But I can tell you this all my children, whether they're over, they're all, you know, have their own moments and lives and, 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 and the things that are going on with themselves. But they will all know how to fight back. I like and that. It's all, and it's all about, it's all about your fight back. It's all about, yeah, listen, we're all going to be knocked down at some point in life or this. We're going to have a loss or we're going to lose a loved one or we're going to lose ourselves, in fact. But mm. how you respond is your power. How you respond, how you understand your own value, how you understand to move forward with those that love you, that's where you, you gain. And and if you don't have those people in your life, you, you make sure that you, you find a way to love yourself and go to the right uh you know sources and talk to the right people to get that help but your power is how you respond that's 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 for me that's brilliant mate. that's brilliant and I, and I think it's very um important to say at this stage for all of our audience if you are in a dark place and you need someone to talk to please do reach out to north can wave your mind um Thank you, Leon, for sharing that. Incredible. No problem at all. And like yeah. I say, you know, listen, every, anyone that is sort of going through it and everyone has different things going on in life and it's very weird times right now as well. So, yeah. you know, sometimes pressure, stress, anxiety can all fall into the, the same procedure as whether it's depression or whatever it is. So it's just about understanding where, where you're at, but to not give up hope because yeah. it's so bad right now. I'm telling you, and I'm a, I'm a true testament of, yes, it's, wow. it's, it's been there and it's been there, but it's also been there again, right? So yeah. we, when we're in those dark places, we don't ever think that we're going to actually see up again. So 
my own testament to anyone that is struggling is that you will see up again because you can't go no lower than you, you you've gotten so it's all about responding in the right manner and, and and pushing forward the best way you can and always try and speaking of up again let's get back to the football my friend this team certainly got up didn't they this is your Norwich City uh, this is your Norwich I, mean, I feel a bit like I feel a bit I mean because I, I know to be fair like I've got Craig Fleming there as well you know yeah, you've left out Fleming. I've left out Craig. Malky. Um, I left out Malky. Um, I think when we went into the Premiership, Malky wasn't really a presence uh, in in the Premiership. I believe not really. So that's why you went. Yeah. And I think Malky was a fantastic player, but every player sort of has their time in the timings of, of when they can, you know, really do it. And I just don't think Malky had that in the premiership. Craig, yeah, hundred percent. He was, he was a big part of it. So it was sort of between Craig and, 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 and obviously, um, Doherty, obviously. It's, uh, mate, it's, the Ron, so the Ron for Pele. Mate, it's <laughs> the ginger. I love that. Um, there's, there's some names in there. Um, there are some, there are some real names, but what, what I want to do is, and um, you might um, be pleasantly surprised, or maybe perhaps a bit scared. Um, I've contacted a couple of your former teammates, um, and um, they've sent me videos. I don't often get video messages, but really? clearly you've inspired them so much for them to want to send a video message in. So I've got a couple of surprises for you. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, someone that lots of Norwich fans will know. Mr. Darren Huckabee. What does he say about <laughs> Neil McKenzie? Hello, TNC boys. Darren Huckabee here. You asked me to give you 20 seconds about Leon McKenzie. So here it goes. In nearly 20 years as a player, I don't think I played with somebody who had as much heart, courage and bravery as Leon. Whether he was playing against a defender from League One or Rio Ferdinand in the Premier League, them defenders knew they were in a game every single time. Whether it was in training or matches, he gave his all every single day without fail. Don't ask him about his 3,000 metre running though, because that was pretty shocking. To sum him up, I'd say three things. Warrior, teammate, brother. Good stuff. Wow. wow. Mr. Darren Huckabee, what's your reaction to that, Leon? It's, you know what, it's, it's, uh, it's emotional, you know? It's emotional. These are, these are, you know, these are these are players that I have battled with. We went to battle together, you know. Um, and when Darren came in, I knew he was the man. And yeah, I just I just took to him. He I knew he knew how I sort of was as a player, and he knew my my my, my good traits and and my strengths. And it just worked. I knew he was going to be there. I knew like once I'd done certain things in a game, I knew I'm just flip, flinging it, banging it out to him. And I'm getting in the box, and literally, that was it. You know what I mean? So yeah, no, he's he's a top man, and and, and it's the same back. You know, I, I I couldn't have done it without him for sure. You, you you both had that sort of bite, and we we love we love that. The Norwich fans love to see that fight and that yeah, power. I mean, the three bars of meter run. I mean, honestly, this is obviously me coming into a club full of fantastic runners. By the way, like okay. we didn't. It was very new to me in terms of I, I couldn't believe what I was doing when I was the first preseason I had and I'm seeing like Darren and and some serious runners just going for it yeah. <laughs> I could not believe it one time <laughs> I was I was running so hard in the 3000 meters and I just saw I just saw Darren coming up beside me and he just goes don't worry mate keep going <laughs> I, just, I just was just, I was demoralized Wait, so an that, was, uh, that was a 3,000 meter. I hated them ones. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the, that's one from Darren Huckabee. Amazing. Another man um, that that I got a video message from was none other than your striking partner, Dean Ashton. What does Dean Ashton say about Leon McKenzie? <laughs> TNC boys, hope you're well. Leon, my OG strike partner. Not going to lie. It was class. 
playing alongside yourself for the Mighty Canaries and I looked up to you when I came to Norwich. I hugely respected you as a player and I learned a hell of a lot as well day to day in training from yourself um, in terms of that work ethic, that competitiveness and the confidence, of course. Um, it was just class though, playing against top defences with a strike partner like you. I could not have asked for more. And I got to watch you on the speed bag most days as well. What a joy that was. Um, I hope you're keeping well. You're doing brilliant things, of course, since you've retired. We need to catch up. Hopefully see you soon, partner. All the best. Love that. All right, that's it's slapped. Proper, proper. And he knows that we, we, you know, he, he knows I feel it's mutual. He's the he's the best he's the best striker I, I played with in terms of where where we was at and what we was playing in. I, I always put him as number one because not only was he a fantastic player and you know very very short lived uh, career, but what a player on his day, man! He's just uh, worst trainer ever, but unbelievable. Like match wise, unbelievable. Just so smart and old school kind of. He would have been a top England player. Would he would have he would have yeah. done it. he would have done it for sure. And to get the privilege, you know, it was a privilege for me to I say opportunity for me to play alongside him. And yeah, we 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 just again gelled. We you know when you form that partner partnership, it's always a, many many partnerships that come along like that. And I feel like we kind of formed that. You know, you always hear about your your, your Coles, your, your Yorks, and and so forth, and Righty and Brighty, and do you know what I mean? But I, I kind of had like a little partnership with him, and and he definitely felt protected on the mate. pitch. Mate. Well, I'm not surprised, mate, and and I'm not surprised for this upcoming reason. Now, you've um you've had a little jab there at Dean Ashton, your old strike partner, saying he's not a good trainer. But don't worry, uh, no, no. Do you know what it was? Do you, know, do you know what it was? No, and I'll be honest with you, with that situation, I think it was his first day of training and everyone was just like a bit like, <laughs> but it was just the way he was in training. He's just very much kind of a little bit laid back and, you know, and his touch is fantastic. But in training, he just wasn't really this. And I think what I took from that is, is that he kind of learned, when he says like he learned something from me, what he did and and, and put into his game was, he kind of learned how to probably train a little bit more on the the ball, and then come games, is 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 flipping straight over. So, I think I'll take that one as well. Okay, fine. But one of the things that Dean Ashton did also WhatsApp me was, and someone else has told me this before. So this is now about to come out in the wash. He said to me, "Can you ask Leon about the time?" that he almost boxed Yusef Safri's head off. <laughs> Why does... You know what, Dino, yeah, he's, he's such an... He always loves bringing this up. Do you know why? <laughs> no, no, do you know why? It's because he was ringside. <laughs> because he was ringside. And every time, you know, he's like a little kid. Every time I tell the story, he's like this. Oh, my God. I'm like getting into it. Do you know what I mean? Now, nah, listen, you know what, like... You know, not a lot of people know my background. Like I'm, I'm not a dickhead. So it's like if you kind of get on the wrong side of me in a very disrespectful way, you're trying to sort of come for me in a way where I feel like I need to defend myself because I'm not. I don't go around punching people, but if you come at me in in a way that's disrespectful, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna show you something I've done since I was eight years old. Because really, I'm a I'm a boxer turned footballer. It's not the other way around, really. Yeah. But Yusuf was just bless him. He was a bit of a mad Moroccan anyway. Uh, and he was, you know, had a little bit of a short fuse. And just one time in the treatment room, he had a bit of a short fuse. I, I was playing around with him on the treatment bed, like, you know, how you doing, mate? Uh, like, just kind of, you know, tickling him or whatever, just sort of mucking about. And he just, he just kind of switched on me. Um, so I kind of had to go into defensive mode, but before we could sort of do anything, I'd already thrown about two or three punches and he just did not know what to do. And I pushed oh. it. 
in his ear and and all these things there and 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 everyone was a bit locked. That Daz was, I think Dan was in the room, <laughs> Dino was in the room, and they just was just like, oh my god, with all the people to 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 pick on. But yeah, I mean, yeah, that that was you know, it's not like I'm I'm, I'm really sort of proud of. We we kind of you know we shook hands after. He came up to me after. He goes like. Pff, I, 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 Good punches, good punches. Yeah, he got, he got. Uh, most people, he, he said he got, he got me wrong, and, and that, that's that's where it was. We're we're good. We're we're in a good place. Um, I mean, I didn't. I mean, Nigel did say that he was going to find me, but he never did. Okay, well, you got away. Well, there you go. So, headmaster Nigel Worthington, uh, you clearly did one well there, L- Leon. Let's um, let's. I can't believe some of those stories already. And um, let's come to the end of your your time at Norwich now, because yeah. that, was, that was one that was. V- very lively to say the least even back when you know social media wasn't as as, as prominent and, and and things like that I, I remember being it it was all over the papers um you handed in a you handed in a transfer request which mm. Nigel rejected at the time yeah I've got a couple of quotes here which I want to read to you and um, quotes from yourself at the time mm. you said I'm in the last 12 months of my contract and I need to be playing I was putting out my marker. It's not a case of me spitting out my dummy. I need to be playing regularly. It's not a token gesture. I've let my frustrations be known. All the lads understand my decision, but no one knows what it's been like for me. I'm ready to move on. Mm. So what I want to ask you is, you know, what was it like for you at that time? And, and you know, what was going on for you to, you know, to do that? That's that. That's just a, is it's a deep, there's a deeper version in that. It's very how media would interpret oh, saying okay. whatever it is. There's a deeper version in that in terms of, of course, I don't what, what, I don't really want to leave, but obviously I think I broke my ankle coming back off the back of the, the premiership. I was sort of in and out of the team for sure. Mm. Obviously I want to play. Playing for me was my release. And where I wasn't playing, I, I was just, a bit of a mess away from football mm. and I was going for a horrendous divorce which probably yes. just hold the whole town probably knows anyway um and yeah that just I just it was just a lot it was just a lot um and I just wanted to go back home London was my heart I just wanted to go back home um and unfortunately home wasn't London um that we went back to uh but I think once once the situation came in to go to Coventry, I just wanted a fresh change. It wasn't uh, personal at all to anyone, you know, Nigel. And I even called Nigel literally uh, probably about about two years, maybe two years after or something. Like that. Wow. Yeah, I called him after. I called him after, and we had a we had a good chat, you know. And I just said, I'm 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 sorry how it sort of came across. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, And sometimes when you've got agents involved. Mm, Chinese whispers. You've got agents involved. It it sometimes doesn't help because as much as these agents make it like they've got your best interests at heart, they really don't. But when you're in something, you know, you've got your agent saying, no, no, I've got to get you out, getting you out. I've got this for you, got that for you. You know, let me come on, let me make this happen and blah, blah. You know, can bring your wife and kids, and um, da, 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 da. you think, okay, I just need to maybe just go then. So sometimes you can get the wrong influence, and I think mm. I was probably a little bit naive in terms of, of of certain influence that was around right then. But I was going through quite a lot, so the change was probably needed. What's your? I normally ask this at, at the end, Leon, but I want to talk about something else before I let you go. What's your message to the Norwich City fans? Because you sort of said it there that. You know, it wasn't at, you, you did want to stay at Norwich and you did love the club. Mm. So what is your message to the Norwich fans? Because you, I feel like from all of the bits and pieces I've seen, you've never truly addressed them. Um, and so, you know, for some that, you know, like me, you know, you were like the idol and the man. And then all of a sudden you handed in a transfer request. And, you know, my heart was broke on that day, mate, when it all came out. And so like, what's your message to those yeah, Norwich fans? No, the only effort, listen, I, I'm, I, there's no pretending in anything. I, I, I don't need to to be uh, something I'm not. They're, 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 I, I can only say, like, to all Norwich fans, because I, 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 I feel the energy from some Norwich fans and they wouldn't even look at me. And I'm just like, wow, like, really? Like, 
But all I can I, I only make you understand that it's bigger than football sometimes. Mm. It's bigger than football sometimes. And I just had to, I was just going through a lot. And I, I have to I have to really put it down to I just wasn't in a in a very stable position in my mind. Um it's not like I went to Coventry and played as a strike. It was very awkward for me to go to Coventry. It wasn't exactly happy go. It wasn't that. It was just that I was going through through a lot. And but it's no excuse to to say, well, why are they putting a chance for? I think sometimes we can get easily influenced at the wrong times and when we're going through a certain tough time in 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 life, regardless. <clears throat> and I think I uh, I maybe trusted the wrong people at mm. that particular time, and I'm the one that suffered. I'm the one that suffered. Um, mm. No one else, my agent didn't suffer. No one really suffered. Um, I suffered. My family. Mm. Uh, suffered it, it, with, with what was truly going on. But you know what? I can only see deeply from my heart to any Norwich fan that I see um, that maybe feels a bit in a way because of that situation, I can, from my heart, say to you, it was never, ever, ever personal. I apologise if it affected uh, anyone's, you know, mindset on, on, you know, what I'd done. I'm just not that tight. You only have to see the way I played to really understand that it wasn't, I wasn't there just to be like, oh, let me just do this and bounce. Like, I, I, it wasn't that. But I was going through a lot of things, and and um, sometimes you have to look after number one, um, and and that's that's all it is. But I'm truly sorry for anyone that was affected by it. May you you don't need to say sorry, but I I appreciate it. But yeah, I I'm so, I'm so pleased that you addressed the North City fans though, and and Leon, we could. We could talk for hours, but I know you're an extremely busy man with all of the incredible things that that you have done and continue to do. And something mm. quite big is coming up, right? You, you've got a documentary coming out. So talk me through this. It's been about six years now. It's, it's been it's been quite ongoing, very very long. Uh, it's called Ten Count. Um, got my first screening actually on Friday with a, a private screening that we're doing in Soho, London. Um, just privately, but it's a big deal in what it represents. You know, all you guys will, will see at some point what I've been doing and maybe the ones that kind of judge me for putting in a transfer request once maybe watching this film will get a greater understanding on mental health mm -hmm. as well as it as well as uh, you know, it being in sport. So this film is is my journey. The foundation is me, but it's not really based fundamentally me to do with me. It's, it, it spins off into other areas in other athletes' lives, and I look into more. I look into the areas of why athletes are so susceptible to mental health issues. Um, mm -hmm. and I've, yeah, I, I interview athletes all over the world, um, even as far as. Uh, going into going to LA and, and interviewing um, Dwayne Johnson, aka The Rock. Wow! Who who, uh, who flew me over to LA because he looked into my story, believed in me, and he said, oh, "I'm I'm inspired by you, Liam." Um, <laughs> Incredible! Over. Imagine that, May I? Uh, you know, there's a list of there's a list of names. You know, Kelly Holmes, Ricky Hatton, Alan Shearer, Jamie Redknapp. And the list goes on. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure when it's going to be commissioned as such. Uh, we've got a US tour to do first, um, which starts next month, and then hopefully uh, the UK tour will, will 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 be underway, and then uh, hopefully a platform will pick it up. Leon, I am so grateful for your time today. I speak on behalf of all of the Norwich City fans by saying thank you so much for everything that you did for our football club. As a kid, I can just say just thank you so much for inspiring me. I just, I loved watching you play and exactly what Huck said. You were just a warrior, man. And I, oh, I, thank you. I appreciate it. And I appreciate, and I, mean, it. I, appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Honestly, I appreciate um, everyone that saw me for me. You know what I mean? So I appreciate it.
And thank you so much for, for coming on the podcast today. And of course, a, a massive thank you to all of the Norwich City fans that are watching and listening to this all over the world. Uh, if you've enjoyed this podcast, let us know. What do you think? What questions have you got for Leon? What stones were left un unturned? But hopefully there weren't any, but let us know on social media. We are at Talk Norwich City. As always, give us a five-star review on iTunes, Spotify, thumbs up on YouTube and all that nonsense. Um, Leon, what's the last thing to say? On the ball city. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, mate. Come on.